as you know, now that the Oscar winners are announced, if your movie wasn't mentioned in any way, shape, or form, then it's completely irrelevant. Throw out your Blu-ray, VHS, Laserdisc, whatever you have it on, because if it doesn't get that gold, then you're not allowed to like it. Or it's, if your movie won Best Picture, then you're not allowed to like it anymore because it's popular. Film Twitter changes it all the time. Either way, Shape of Water won, which, shout out to my uncle Guillermo, and since I haven't made a video on it, I decided, you know what, now that it's won Best Picture, why not be one of the 85 videos that's gonna come out on this movie? But I'm not really gonna cover too much deep into the film since if you don't know Screen Prism, they made a video that is fantastic. They pretty much cover all the homages, the references, a bunch of cool things, and they, they're they killing it over there. They're on YouTube. If you miss them on YouTube, they're literally now in the freaking theater right before your movie starts, so they're doing big things. Go check out that video. What I wanna do here is kind of cover the themes that are in The Shape of Water, but more so how that connects a lot to, uh, Oscars themes and what he's been doing. Look, I love the Oscars, right? Even if it doesn't go the way that I wanted to, the movies that I wanted, the uh, the ceremony maybe boring, whatever it is, it's sort of like the Super Bowl for sports fans. Even if their team, you know, didn't make it all the way, they still they still watch it. They still have a good time with it. Same thing here. If my movie doesn't even get mentioned, if it doesn't win, I mean. It's, still remains my favorite movie. But as a fan who keeps up with the ceremony, I think one of the biggest questions that gets asked every year by film fans is, well, uh, what the heck actually is an Oscar movie? Like, you know, we would all argue that it's supposed to be the best picture of the year, but when you have 8,000 Academy members, right? And you actually have some of them come out and tell you how they vote, that definition gets a little skewed. For example, there was a member who came out and disclosed that as he was talking with older Academy members, those dudes didn't see Get Out as an Oscar movie, which is fair. I, you know, you don't have to love Get Out. If you have actual critiques for the movie, that's completely fine. You don't have to see Get Out as an Oscar movie if you really don't, but you do have to see Get Out to know that. I think that's like one of the most baffling things that gets revealed every single year by some of the Academy members that like half of them don't watch all the movies. Like you don't get hired to be a lifeguard if you don't know CPR, if you don't know how to swim, if you don't know how to guard lives. So how is it that the people who are literally <laughs> responsible for voting for these movies on what's gonna be deemed the best picture of the year aren't even watching them? They don't even have to go out in the snow like the rest of us do. They get screeners sent to their house. I remember back when 12 Years a Slave won and I, I truly believe that was the best movie of that year for me. But it was interesting to hear the people, the articles that were written, the people who came out and did interviews about how they didn't even see 12 Years a Slave, yet they voted for it because again, that was the Oscar movie. Some of you may be aware of this thing called the Legacy Award, which is pretty much, you know, just the uh, I got you on the next one and where the Academy clearly messed up and didn't give it to the person who actually gave the best performance. So uh, they give it, they, they, they give it like, for a performance that, that doesn't even live up to it. It's like when an NBA ref makes a bad call, so they fix that by making a bad call later on. That's crazy to me, because it's just a vicious cycle. If you messed up once and you're gonna give it to it later, well then whoever really deserved it that year is just, you're gonna be doing a whole circle of it. If I were to compare it to like a story that I had growing up, it would be this little monstrosity right here. Now, maybe some of you are homeschooled, maybe some of you actually went to a public school, but this little monstrosity right here, this pizza face thing that I made in third grade where I have Benny the Bull's nose, my necklace is defining physics. I don't even know what's on this goat cheese. Anyways, the concept back in third grade was that if you created something in art class and turned it in, if it was the best of the best, then it would get framed and put up on a wall, right? So everyone else who was like going to the drinking fountain can pass by and see that you were the best of the best and that you were gonna become president. I actually ended up working at that school as a bilingual aide and the art teacher was still there. So I remember walking down the hallways to go get a drink of water and I saw that they were still putting up the kids' artwork there. Obviously it wasn't as good as this thing right here, this masterpiece, but I did ask the art teacher, I was like, yo, that's really cool that you guys are still doing that, right? And she said, oh, those things? Yeah, it's just to make the kids feel special. Hello, darkness, my old friend. I, I have never felt more like Leonardo DiCaprio in my life. But that's what I'm getting at. You know, I think that a lot of the movies that are made, I think they're very well crafted. For a majority, unless it's the producers like overseeing something, they're making movies, they're, they're telling stories that they really want to tell. They truly are trying to make their best picture. So it sucks when an award show, as you can see, like literally from the people who have commented on it, who are part of the voters, that they're playing off a narrative. Growing up, my biggest dream was 
to get an Oscar, right? And obviously I know as I get older that the best thing you can actually ask for is to have an audience that not only watches but interacts with the content that you make. But of course, having a, a gold statue would still be pretty cool. And that's why it's upsetting when you hear that, you know, the award show you look up to is being manipulated and being driven by an agenda. When you hear the actual voters say that, yes, who I nominate is driven by an agenda. Ma'am, I looked at the history of membership, which is mostly older white males. I don't think they're going to make any positive change. I'm not going to vote like them. I don't want to think like them. They don't represent me or the community of artists that is important to me. And I get that sentiment 1000%, right? You know, I left McDonald's because they didn't care about my muck happiness. I will always stand with you if there's like a group who's trying to go against you. But 8,000 members and to, to say that like everyone who is the complete opposite of you is out to get you, it's kind of like putting them in the box you don't want to be in. Like, I get that you probably are seeing voters, right? Voters who don't want to leave their little square. They don't want to vote for anything that's different to them. But you doing the same thing ain't gonna help. It's like back in high school when you used to, you know the shortcut to get to your class, but then someone walks by who you don't want to, you don't want to see. So now you take the long route and are late to your next period. We're adults now. I don't, I don't, I don't get why we act like we're in middle school. Like, of course I want there to be change, I just don't want it to be petty cash. I still think in general, a lot of people just vote on what they like. Perhaps it's made me more aware of inclusion issues overall, and that's a good thing. That said, my vote goes to what I feel was the best achievement. I'm aware that not everyone has an agenda when they're voting, right? And I like to hear that there's actual people who are trying to figure out what the best of cinema actually is without, you know, whatever agenda they may be driving. You know, I actually disagree with a lot of the females who were also in this article who talked about Lady Bird not even deserving a nomination, which they're wrong because that movie is fantastic. But you know, when they were when they were talking and mentioning that they weren't just going to get behind a woman just to get behind a woman really showed me that they respect their own representation. They're wrong about it not being a good movie, but I like to see that they were actually looking out for what the best achievement of the year was. I've made several videos covering it and you guys know that. I, I believe everyone deserves representation. That everyone can have their own mediocre Marvel movie as well. But I also think that it's the viewer's responsibility to seek out the people already making that. I've been in discussions with a lot of people, I've had discussions with a lot of people talking about how Mexicans are underrepresented in Marvel movies. And it's like, we're in the after after credit scenes, cleaning up the shawarma. But also, he, my freaking uncles have snatched four of the last five directing Oscars. My cousin Lubeski won it three years in a row. There is so much content out there that you can go out and praise and support, but instead, I feel like sometimes we complain because our minority group isn't like overtaking anything. And sometimes we get into a debate, a little fight, and where we're putting down other minorities just to make ours better. In case my message gets lost in translation like the movie, what I'm trying to get at is that I love the Oscars. I really appreciate the ceremony because I'm not a guy who really roots for movies. I root for the filmmaker. Like I love the stories that they have to tell because I want to be a filmmaker myself. And I love seeing them get awarded and be able to just, you know, grow in their careers. And it sucks that even though I do agree with a lot of the winners, right? I honestly think that a majority, most of the movies that are nominated throughout the years really are great movies. It sucks to know the behind the scenes and how some people try to manipulate things. I don't have a problem with movies being political because honestly, everything is. Like everything, ha everyone has an agenda. The agenda on this channel is to direct you to the best movies out there. So I'm way less concerned about what a movie has to say as opposed to how it says it. Does it execute it well? And honestly, The Shape of Water does that effectively. And it definitely is a political movie like Guillermo has said himself. It's about a woman who doesn't have a voice to speak out, but refuses to be silenced. A foreign being being mistreated by Americans, a gay man who goes against the norm, a minority playing the helping hand, and the old head who everyone's going up against who just wants things to go his way and no way else. I think The Shape of Water is a fantastic movie, even if it's not my favorite movie of the year. But it's interesting to see how it's fit the mold for what an Oscar movie is. How it's shaped an Oscar. A movie with a trending message. A movie that's a love letter to cinema and the arts. A movie that had the best campaign for the award. I love the Oscars. I'll watch the Oscars every year until I'm there. But I'll always, always love the movies that impacted me that year way more.
Thank you guys for checking out this video. If you want to follow all my other thoughts and uh, complain, if you disagree, whatever else, there's the comment section. But you could also follow me on Twitter at the A to Z Show if you're so inclined and if you believe the same way I do that movies should not just be clapbacks, but uh, ones that you clap for because you enjoy. Then head on over to Patreon for a dollar a month. We got a bunch of extra stuff going up over there. Uh, we are so close to doing this movie trivia show called Cine Class that I had back in the day, bringing it back all for 99 cents in a cup of water. You too can be a part of that movie Jeopardy.